Okay, folks, MBS here again. Today I'm going to be talking about centrifugal advance. That's centrifugal advance in the distributor and we'll cover vacuum advance as well. And uh, what I'm going to be doing, we've got another distributor now and this engine that I did a bit of a job on this distributor a few months back and uh, we're just now wanting to calibrate it to this motor. Uh, so we'll see how it goes. For those of you that don't know what centrifugal advance is, it's nothing more than your ignition timing advances as you rev the engine up, yeah? No load, it just works purely by RPM. Uh, the faster the engine goes, the more timing advance we need to give it up to a certain point, okay? There's a maximum specification allowed for your uh, centrifugal advance. There'll be an intermediate uh, number as well, so for instance, of this engine, we probably want the centrifugal advance to start advancing above idle speed, yeah? So if it idles around about just under 1,000, we want the advance to start around about 1,100, okay? That'll guarantee that the timing comes back to zero when we're idling. If it advances too early, you can't adjust the carburetor at idle speed because the advance is still stuck on. So you're getting too much advance and it might flicker backwards and forwards if it's got very light springs, a light adjustment. So you need to match the centrifugal advance to your engine and camshaft. And that can be a bit tricky sometimes. Um, the way things are now, high compression heads, you know, the heads are all being shaved on these old motors. They're, they're running higher compressions. Uh, they're running now on unleaded fuel instead of leaded. Uh, so advanced curves can be a bit tricky these days. And some of it is probably a little bit of trial and error sometimes. Uh, give it as much advance as you can uh, without it pinging. And if it does ping, you've got too much advance and you have to retard it. All right. And retarding the initial timing isn't going to help you there because then it's doughy at the bottom end. So we want the correct initial timing, we want the centrifugal advance to start at the right time, we want it to have the correct amount of degrees intermediate, somewhere around about 2000, 2200 is the intermediate, and then your maximum, which uh, kind of hard on an engine stand three, revving an engine, checking it, because it's uh, usually around about 3000, 3500 RPM that you'll get the maximum centrifugal advance. So we could try just revving the guts out of it just quickly, observable for timing light where the uh, advance goes, and uh, we should be pretty right there. There's also vacuum advance, all right? So we can take the vacuum hose off, and I've got a vacuum pump that I can use that I can actually pump up vacuum to that vacuum unit, and we'll see how much extra degrees we can get on the vacuum advance and see if that's within the uh, original specs it's supposed to be. Now, I've got no specs on this. I didn't bring a spec sheet. Um, I haven't got anything this old anymore. Uh, so, from memory, you know, if we can get 10, 11 degrees at 2,000, um, starting at 11, and hopefully around about 28, 30 degrees at uh, 3, 3 and a half, um, that's a good starting point, uh, maybe for this engine. But, you know, yours, yours will differ, depending what you've got. So you need to find out the initial specs, what the car had when it was uh, first manufactured, and then make small deviations from there as you have to. And like I said, the only way you're going to figure out if you've got too much advance is listen for a ping when you load up the engine at low RPMs or even medium RPMs. Right, so we're going to start this up. I'm going to leave the vacuum hose off because we don't want vacuum advance to interfere with our centrifugal advance when we're looking at with the timing light. Otherwise, I'll get the uh, centrifugal advance uh, numbers wrong. And we'll see what it actually is. And then we'll take the cap off and we'll have a look inside and I'll show you where to find the springs and how to adjust them to get what we want uh, as far as specs go. So let's get this old girl started and we'll go from there. Now, of course, you're gonna need a timing light. One that's got a, a wheel or a degree wheel on it that you can adjust so you can bring the pointer back to zero when you're uh, checking it with the light. So uh, I might put the camera down there, whether it comes out or not is another thing, but uh, 
It'll give you a bird's eye view of what I'm looking at down here. If it doesn't come out, I won't bother putting it in the video. Okay, so let's do that. seen enough there. The, uh, with this distributor that's idling different to the uh, last distributor that was in it uh, because the advance curve in this is starting too early so we're going to have to adjust the primary spring and we'll show you how to do that. Okay in this little space in here we're going to see a little tag as we rotate this and it'll have a spring attached to it. What we want to do is find the light one there's two springs in there. There's, there's the centrifugal advance in action, exactly how it works. But we've got to find that little post, and uh, that's going to be a little hard for me with the camera there, but let's see what I can do. Okay, let's rotate the engine. Sorry guys, I keep looking away, but I have to, so I can put my screwdriver in this correct place. There's the spring. Gotcha. I must have just missed that primary spring when I was turning it before. Okay, how do you tell the difference between a primary and a secondary spring? This one is the secondary. See it's loose. You can see I just pulled it in there. So you can actually jiggle it around. So that's your secondary spring. That's what we would take out if it had too much advance right at the uh, coming in too early. Uh, but what we've got to do is tighten the other spring, the primary, because it's starting too early. So we'll adjust the primary spring, and uh, I think that one would probably won't even touch it. So I've got to turn the engine over another turn, so we can get the uh, primary spring into view, so we can adjust it. Interview is the primary spring. So what we're going to do is bend this tag out. Okay, if I put the rotor back on this, I can feel the centrifugal advance. Now that's rubbing up against the points there. See, so I'm getting a little bit of extra resistance there because it's riding, the points are riding on the cam. So what we're going to do is we're going to bend that out a little bit. Okay, that should just about do me, I reckon. Now look, you guys aren't going to have the experience I've got with the uh, centrifugal advance. So it's uh, bend it out a little bit and see how you go. All right, bit of uh, suck and see. So I've bent that out a little bit. So two things are going to happen. It's going to start later and I'm probably not going to get as much degrees mid-range as I had before because the spring's a little tighter so uh, that'll be uh, maybe a couple of degrees short of what I had before. All right so we're going to put uh, everything back together we're going to put the timing light back on it and check it again. Oh yeah that's made a big difference straight away. That is now sitting on its base timing Starts at 11, 1100. Oh. 
Ouais, ouais. Oh, that has made a huge difference to how this engine idles and runs. Because we had the centrifugal advance coming on early, it was idling quite fast. As soon as I started this, it was idling very, very slow because the timing was back where it should be, uh, as, it, as it should be. Uh, so intermediate, it didn't change that much. I think it was one degree less. Uh, at the top end, we've got uh, 30 degrees, uh, around about three and a half thousand. Uh, so, yeah, that's made a huge difference to the way it uh, idles now. Uh, so that probably work out pretty good for us. Now all I have to do is check vacuum advance, and we'll check how much uh, timing advance that gets. Okay, so that's it for centrifugal advance. I hope you pick something up out of that. You've got to understand that centrifugal advance has got to start after idle speed by about 150 RPM at least, all right? This is a close to 1,000 RPM idle on, on this thing with one carburetor on it that doesn't suit the camshaft. Uh, so uh, once we, if we were to drill a hole through that butterfly, we'd probably get this to idle uh, nicely under 1,000 RPM. But uh, centrifugal advance starts at 1,100. Beautiful. So it comes back to idle. Made a big difference just the way this thing ran. Once I pulled that tag out a little bit, uh, it came back to idle beautifully. Uh, we've done his other Tirana did the same thing. I couldn't get the uh, triples to idle back down, and that's because the trivial advance was still sitting up at about five or six extra degrees when it uh, should have been back to zero. Uh, so yeah, pretty important that you get the centrifugal advance to start at the right time. Make sure that it keeps advancing mid to mid range to 2200, you want somewhere anywhere from 15 degrees to 20 degrees max, uh, depending on your engine. And then you want somewhere around about 27 plus uh, at 335. Uh, and of course you want your vacuum advance unit to work. Uh, this is the bad case being an XU1 with vacuum unit, uh, generally it's not a good combination with one barrel stromy sitting on it because it's already got vacuum here. I have to take this vacuum hose off to set the initial timing because it's already got vacuum at the port. Uh, like I said, that's because the butterflies open too, too much. So yeah, all distributors are the same. Some are easier than others. This one was really, really easy. The electronic distributors in the Holden Blue engines, you have to adjust them through the side of the carburetor. Really, really difficult, yeah. That's what they invented distributor graphs for, to pull the dizzy out, set up your curve, put the dizzy back in, uh, which I had in my last shop and the shop before that. Made it, uh, life very, very simple. But when you haven't got the gear, guys, this is the only way you can do it. Uh, with a, a good timing light, one that you've got the trigger wheel that you can advance and retard the, the light so you can get an accurate number. Okay, another thing I've just thought of that I should mention is uh, if you're maintaining your vehicle regularly and you're doing tune-ups and all that sort of stuff and then all of a sudden you notice your timing is, let's say, sitting on 15 degrees when you know you set it on 5 the other day. What that is, is centrifugal advance is seizing up, okay? It's getting centrifugal advance, and then it can't come back to uh, the idle position of zero because it's uh, seizing up on the shaft, all right? So it stays stuck up there, and then it totally seizes, and then you've got no centrifugal advance at all. So you'll end up with a car that's not quite gutless because you've already got it up at 15 degrees so you've, you've got it 10 degrees over what it should be at idle but you might have trouble starting it sometimes being over advanced you might get a kickback uh, but it's going to be gutless at the top end because you're not getting that extra 15 degrees yeah so uh, you need to keep uh, a watchful eye on that put a drop of oil onto the little wick uh, seal that's in the top of the shaft, keep it lubricated so it doesn't seize on you. 
I know the distributors on the side that go sideways into a lot of engines, they seize up a lot because there's no way you can lubricate them and the grease goes dry, then oxygen gets in there, it starts to create rust and then the centrifugal advance seizes up. Uh, so yeah, you can check that with the timing light too. Just stick your timing light on, give it a quick rev, take your vacuum hose off so you're not getting any vacuum advance and if it stays still, you know your centrifugal advance is seized, all right? Okay, I think that's about all I've got to say on centrifugal advance. There may be more on my website um, that I've discussed centrifugal advance, dwell angle, uh, all that sort of stuff. I've got some nice pictures on there, uh, but most of my videos are on YouTube. Okay, right. what about vacuum advance? Well, there's not much you can do with vacuum advance. It's preset it by the manufacturer, but you can check if it works, all right? It's pretty simple. You can buy one of these little hand pumps, just pump them up, stick it onto your vacuum unit, pump it up, and see if it works by looking inside the distributor. Or if you've got a timing light, you'll have a timing light while it's idling, pump up the vacuum unit and you'll see the timing advance. Yeah, generally somewhere around about 10 degrees. There are specifications like how much vacuum to how many degrees. So if you've got that spec, that comes in handy. But you definitely need this if you want to follow the spec because uh, you're not going to do that with your mouth. The other method you could also use is obviously just grab the vacuum hose and suck on it. Okay, the unit should move and it should hold vacuum. So if you put your tongue over the end of it when you're sucking it, uh, it'll hold the vacuum and the uh, unit won't leak back. And you could do the same while it's running as well. You could put a timing light on it while you suck on this and you'll see the timing advance. So what is vacuum advance exactly? Well, this is the load part. Centrifugal was the rev part. The vacuum advance is load, okay? So at part throttle, no load. You've got full vacuum advance generally. Uh, and that is because a leaner mixture requires more advance. So hence the vacuum unit. And uh, when you're obviously full throttle, there's no vacuum at the port. So you lose vacuum advance and it's all centrifugal. And that's its only purpose really, just to give you more advance uh, when you're cruising uh, because of the lean mixtures. <laughs> Excuse me. In the later model engines, the with all the pollution gear and everything on them, you've got vacuum hoses everywhere. The vacuum advance can actually come on when the car starts overheating. It, uh, a port opens up, which is temperature controlled by a switch somewhere up the front of the engine, and it allows a uh, vacuum to go to the distributor while it's idling away, and it picks up the advance, engine revs a little higher, and that helps keep cool the engine down. All right, let's have a look in here so you can see exactly what it's doing. Um, otherwise, you know, we could do a timing light, but you won't see it. The camera, I don't think, uh, picks it up too well. All right, I'll suck on some vacuum. And your vacuum unit's leaking, Chris. Okay, I've got my tongue over that the whole time, and the vacuum advance unit is leaking back. I'm just going to check the hose. Definitely nothing wrong with my vacuum hose. So it's gotta be the unit itself, or there's a leak in that spout where the uh, hose goes on, uh, or there's a leak in the diaphragm, okay? This will work, uh, but obviously it doesn't hold the vacuum, so it's going to be short of a few degrees of working correctly, but at least it's sort of working. Uh, so it's better than nothing, uh, but really he needs a new vacuum unit if they're still available, or he can get them reconditioned. Uh, Some place in Queensland there, Brisbane Way, they recondition these vacuum units and put new diaphragms in. Okay, so that's it for centrifugal and vacuum advance. I hope you learnt something out of all that. Uh, that you may have not have known before. Uh, that's what it's all about. That's what I'm trying to help you with. And uh, hope you enjoyed the video. Catch you in another one.